uh, so I have no option. <laughs> That's good. Well, we, we actually got rid of cable too, <laughs> but just because we couldn't afford it, it was too expensive. I, I told them I, I can't either. I made that TV or I made the TV. Well, you made the right choice because children should not be watching TV more than two hours a day. Anyways, every all screen time should be less than two hours. <laughs> Try to get to that too. So you might ask me, so what should my team be doing? So. The Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology has recently put together a set of guidelines. Uh, they, they, um, there was recommendations from about 15 years ago and they've updated them. They did what is called an evidence-based review. So they took a look at all of the published literature out there about physical activity in kids and they tried to identify how much time should a child be spending doing physical activity in order to accrue a health benefit or in order to, to improve their health. So what was found from that very rigorous process is that teenage children, so children between the ages of 12 and 17, should accumulate at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day of the week. So that's, you know, 60 minutes a day, that's quite a bit. But that doesn't mean it needs to be all in one chunk. They can do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes here, 30 minutes there, whatever. It's just that they need to be able to accumulate this much in the, in the day in order to have health benefits. And it is suggested that they do three days a week, they do some sort of activity that is vigorous, so whether it be running or jogging or rollerblading or soccer or something, and that they do three days a week of something that improves their strength, so it's strength activity, resistance training, even yoga, something like this, which is, which is um, different, than, different than an activity that gets your heart rate up, so different than a moderate to vigorous physical activity, but an activity that improves muscular strength and bone strength. So resistance training is the most common form of that. So weight training. So being active for at least 60 minutes a day can help teens improve their health. So we all know that. That's very important. Do better in school. There's a lot of literature now to suggest that active kids do better in school. They have better attention during school and they perform better. Their report cards are better. Uh, to improve their fitness. Again, fitness is also associated with better health outcomes. So the fitter a child is, the better that their overall health is. It will help them grow stronger. We know that physical activity is important for muscular and growth development as well as uh, neuronal development as well. Uh, they can have fun playing with their friends. As you said, your son, if he was out playing soccer with his friends, that's a great time. This is a, another reason why we should be encouraging physical activity. Feel happier. There's a whole set of the psychosocial literature that says that kids that are physically active and are engaged in activities have better mood. They, they feel better. They feel better about themselves. They're just more, um, more emotionally secure than, than kids that are inactive. Um, maintain a healthy body weight. Again, as an obesity researcher, this is something that is important to me, that uh, it helps children to maintain a healthy body weight. doesn't necessarily make them thin, but it will help them maintain their weight, which is also very important. Uh, improve their self-confidence. Again, if a child is active, generally they have a great deal of self-confidence because they feel better about themselves. They have greater body self-esteem, etc. And it helps them to learn new skills. So the more active they are, the more likely they are to try something new. So they're, they're less intimidated. So the more active a child is and the more ex exposure they, they have to activities, the more likely it is that they might choose to try something else. So, for instance, if your child has played soccer, he might be interested in trying lacrosse because he's built that, that base in soccer, so he might be willing to try a, a, a new sport. It just gives them the, the courage to do so. So again, as I told you, I'm an obesity researcher, so I'm interested in physical activity because physical activity can help maintain health. But what I wanted to tell you is that overweight and obesity specifically are not just an aesthetic condition. It's not just how you look. There's actually considerable health uh, consequences associated with, with being overweight. So there's psychosocial issues, there's neurological issues, there's heart health issues, there's endocrine issues such as type 2 diabetes, renal issues with kidney problems, uh, pulmonary problems, obviously there's problems with your lungs, problems with breathing, asthma, etc. And then musculoskeletal problems, so problems with, uh, with uh, bone development, muscle soreness, etc. So interestingly enough, obese children, and especially those in the teenage years, have a 70% chance of being obese as adults. So it's very important that you're doing the, that you're doing the best that you can to encourage your children to be active during their teenage years. Not necessarily to attain um, an ideal body weight, for instance, but at least to be active, because activity on its own, irrespective of your size, is very very important. So I'm just showing this to you. It's very complex, and I'm not expecting you to know anything. But I'm saying overweight and obesity is not simple. 
People try to make it simple. People try to say, oh, if your child is overweight or obese, they eat too much and they exercise too little. That's not the case. That might be, those might be contributors to it, but there's this complex web of things associated with, with obesity. And there's various things that we have no control over. We now have no control. Once you've had the child, you have no control over the biology. That's already set, right? We have very little control over food production as individuals. We have very little control over society in general as individuals. But what we can control is we can control individual activity. This is what we call a modifiable risk factor. That means that we can do something about that. So you can change your behavior. You can't necessarily change where you live. You can't necessarily change um, the culture that you're part of. You can't necessarily change um, how uh, corporate Canada produces food and delivers it to you. And you can't necessarily change society as a whole. But you can change behaviors in home. Those are eating patterns and physical activity. So it's not that eating patterns and physical activity are the only important variables. The point is that those are the easiest two to change. They're not easy to change, but they are the easiest to change. <laughs> so again, as I told you, inactivity, it's just not an issue of weight. Uh, physical activity contributes to overall health, and we shouldn't focus just on the aesthetic. And there are thin people who are metabolically very unhealthy, and there are overweight and obese people that are actually very fit and very healthy. So you have to keep in mind it's not all about body size, it's just about health. So, something else that I have to tell you, do not assume that your child is active. This is a very common perception. Most of you, I'm assuming that you're here, you want to learn more about it. But uh, many people assume that their child is very active and that they do get the 16 minutes a day of physical activity or that they're getting their activity at school. And I will tell you that that is quite false. Only 7%, 7% of Canadian children are meeting the guidelines. So those guidelines that I set out to you, this is from the Canadian Health Measure Survey. This is directly measured physical activity. 7% of our kids are getting what they need. To me, that is red flags all over the place. So there is something that we are doing wrong as a culture. So whether it be uh, our society as a whole, what we're encouraging and discouraging, the school system, everything. There are so many, there are so many contributing factors, but there's something clearly wrong if only 7% of Canadian children are meeting the guidelines. The sad part about that is this is an example of a day in a child's life, for instance. So let's take this. This is an example of, of a child. Waking hours, 8.5 waking hours spent sedentary. So what sedentary means is basically sitting around doing nothing. 8.5 hours. 4.3 hours doing you know, light activity, which might be walking up and down the stairs, getting out of your chair, moving this way or that way, tapping your finger, writing, whatever, reading a book. Sedentary light makes up most of the waking hours. A very, very small portion of your day is spent active. And this is a change over time. So if you think of 20, 30 years ago, this would not have been the same graph. It would have been different because life has changed considerably in that period of time. 